yourself Christmas ornaments, decor, and gifts. And we're going to start out with these peppermint sticks. These are primitive peppermint sticks, and we're going to use the chair cover, the pool noodle from Dollar Tree. And you'll need a butcher knife. So cut a pool noodle about eight inch long section and then cut those into about a half an inch to an inch wide strips. I was able to get seven out of this one inch piece. Now using the white from the hat of the chair cover from Dollar Tree, it is white felt. So if you have the felt, you could use it and cut those in to half inch strips. You'll also do red the same way. Cut you some half inch strips of the red. I'm repurposing this chair cover that was the Santa Claus hat from Dollar Tree we had used in a previous DIY when we made the Santa Claus boot. And as you can see here, you want to glue your strips together and then cut them at an angle. So these strips, they're going to be around 15 inches long, maybe shorter. Glue you a square of white on one end and Make sure it's good and glued down. They'll cover the ends. And then cut you a red one and glue it to the opposite end. This way, if you start your strip red, then you'll have red already covering the end. Or if you start your strip white, you'll have white there. So as you can see, we've already put an angle on our strips that we glued together, and we're gonna begin there. So you wanna make sure that little edge starts at the very, very top. Now, if you lay this down like I did, and you put your hot glue at an angle, you'll be able to lay it straight and just roll it, and it will roll on itself and naturally form an angle going down your peppermint stick. So these primitive peppermint sticks look awesome, and you're going to love this DIY. Definitely add this to your playlist, because this is easy to duplicate and it's really relaxing to make. Now, as you get closer to the end, you're going to see that you need that further angle. So, as I said before, you could cut these strips around 15 inches long. I really didn't keep up with it because I went ahead and had cutoffs left over from this Dollar Tree chair cover. And I just cut them, and if I needed more, I just glued more together and kept going. They won't even notice that they're connected. Now we have it all rolled onto our, our primitive peppermint sticks. So this is how we're going to really make them primitive. Take you some Mod Podge, some coffee, and this is just regular coffee, and I mix my Mod Podge in it. That's going to work as our glue, and put you some cinnamon powder in there. And I'm just using one of my paint brushes and just mixing it together. Now I have some fine glitter to the side, but we'll use that momentarily. Go ahead and place your concoction of Mod Podge, cinnamon, and coffee over your stick and then sprinkle it with some very fine glitter if you desire. The cinnamon powder on these will show up really well and give it that dingy look, and they smell really good. So let them to dry. You want to set them aside and let them dry completely. And the glitter will stick to them because the Mod Podge was in our concoction. Now I have these beautiful free printables and I will have you a link down below where you can print them off. And they are all different types of vintage peppermint labels. And the first thing that we want to do is cut us one out. So if you'll stick with me, I'm going to show you how I printed these directly on fabric. So I took some muslin fabric, and you want to cut your pieces 8 by 10. You'll get the Terrell Magic, which you will find the link down below. Get you a bowl and spray the Terrell Magic onto the fabric and allow it to soak it up. This is a non-sticky type of starch, but it's different. It allows fabric to act as paper and stabilizes it in a liquid form without having to use any kind of paper stabilizer. So use your iron on the cotton setting. You'll iron it out flat and smooth. And there'll be some wrinkles in it, but that's okay. See, it's just like paper. This will allow us to take it to our inkjet printer, pull up our free printable, and print it directly onto the fabric from our inkjet printer. 
We've done many DIYs on this channel, and I'll be sure to link them in the iCard above. So take it back to your crafting area and wrap your peppermint sticks that you made with some jute twine. Punch you a hole through your fabric and attach your fabric vintage label and tie it on. Use enough G twine that it'll go around at least twice and give you enough tail to tie on your tag, tie on your bail, and voila, we have that all assembled now. So you've got this gigantic bail. If you'll soak those in white distilled vinegar, overnight and then take them out and allow the air to hit them they will rust and those are the silver bells i actually got those from dollar tree the great big giant ones and you can use the star ones as well i'll make them available on my website if you'd like to purchase the rusty bells that have the star cutouts that look more vintage and i tied some cheesecloth on there i got from dollar tree during halloween or you can take some regular cheesecloth and it's raveled out and it just looks so primitive and vintage. And here's another set that I made. These make wonderful gifts, smell good, and look good lying around at Christmas. Replicated open face vintage ornaments. You're gonna love this. And we are gonna use some of the, you know, fake faux snow sheeting from Dollar Tree. And these are Dollar Tree ornaments. This is the seven piece pack. Take a black marker and draw a circle just in front of the seam that goes around these ornaments. Using your hot melt glue gun, you can actually set it there and it will pierce a hole for you. So go in front of the marking that you did with your magic marker. That way you don't go past it. But if you do, it's not gonna hurt because by the time you enjoy this DIY that you're definitely going to want to save to your playlist, you will see that it will not be a problem. And you can cut these with a pair of scissors. So now we have this open face ornament, and it is being prepped and ready. And I want to show you that you can do the glitter ornaments just as well. And select any color. If they either had a light blue, that would have been a exact replica of a vintage open face ornament that I've traditionally seen. Now, as you can see, I used my hot melt glue gun to connect the dots together. Then I'm using my scissors straight out cutting this around, and it won't make it jarry or jagged or anything. You can cut it straight off. And even if you do get a little crooked, that gives it more character. Now, here's Rosie. You guys have heard me talk about my mini vacuum. I'll leave an affiliate link down below. I absolutely love this. It's wonderful for getting up glitter. So now that Rosie's cleaned us up, we have these cutoffs, and you'll save those because we'll use them for a DIY to make bird's nests. These figurines and so forth I got from Dollar Tree. If you have a low heat glue gun that is perfect for this particular task, and I'm using the glitter glue stick that you can get from Dollar Tree, go around just the upper edge and that half the rounded half only that would be sitting upward if it were hanging on a tree and build up your glitter around the edge you could try using glue but i'll be honest with you if you have the glitter glue sticks use you a gun so it doesn't gunk up your other gun your main hot glue gun put it on low heat because it will melt these ornaments Put you some Mod Podge on the inside and sprinkle it with some glitter. That will truly give it that vintage, replicated, open face ornament look. And I just dusted out the difference because the Mod Podge helps it to cling and it dries fast. So take the cotton sheeting that you get from Dollar Tree or anywhere that looks like the faux snow or a cotton ball. Cotton works great on this. Just bear in mind that you need a low melt heat gun because you are going to be using glue to attach this sheeting in the bottom. And using cotton might be a little cumbersome because when you put your figurines in it, you need it to be stable and to hold your figurines inside. So as you can see, I've set it up and now I begin putting a little bit of glue to hold the sheeting in place. You could use polyfill as well. Just be careful with gluing that 
And here they are um, with the glitter, the open face, and the little bit of sheeting that's glued in place with the glitter pouring around the outer edge. Take the little figurines. Any figurine will work. I had this small pack I got probably a year before last at Dollar General, and I have looked for them and looked for them and cannot find any more. But any little tiny figurines. Dollar Tree has a bundle of them for the small mini houses. Now you want to take the tinsel, the shiny tinsel we talked about before, and you're going to only put that around the lower edge. Now, if you do not have glitter hot melt glue sticks, this is another option to put on the open faces to make them truly look vintage replica. Is simply glue on the tinsel stems or they're the shiny Chanel stems, but they're actually tinsel stems. This is how they did vintage ornaments. I glued the figurines inside, and then I found my little plastic stars, and I thought, ooh, that would look neat if I added those in there. And then I come up with a new discovery as I'm working with these, because the sky's the limit. Be sure to save this to your playlist, because you're going to want to do these. I had some splay glue. And the spray glue works fine if you have E6000 or even Elmer's or some from Dollar Tree. And sprinkle some faux snow inside of these ornaments. And this was my magical discovery. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have faux snow. And they are gorgeous like that. They looked so much better. And then make sure you glue the little holder on top of these Dollar Tree ornaments because the figurines inside will add weight. And we need to ensure they do not fall off the tree so glue it into place and then tie you some cording in there and that will hold very well this stretchy cordon i had gotten from dollar tree or dollar general and it's like an elastic and it is a replica of the thin kind that used to come on these ornaments and so it made a good replacement and voila here they are and i put all kinds of different things in there some from dollar tree figurines uh, Dollar General figurines, the faux snow, the glitter sticks, the tinsel, and I was absolutely stunned with myself, so impressed with myself. So you guys, let me know what you think if you like these vintage ornaments and if you're going to try them. Vintage tree bags. You're going to love these, and you got a sneak preview a while ago of this free printable. I will be putting the link in the description box down below. And I made these from the Muslim bags from Dollar Tree. And I basically cut them in half and glued the seams to make these half-size bags. They do have this size bag already, but if you only end up with a large like I did, then cut it in half and glue the sides together. And then, of course, you can attach your fabric printable onto these bags using Mod Podge or hot milk glue. You can sew them on if you like. And I basically tied these bags and filled them with polyfill and added cinnamon into them to make them smell wonderful and so vintage looking. Now tie it loosely at the top when you get it good and stuffed. And you can use a skewer like I'm using to just kind of poke around and make sure that the polyfill is filling in the corners. You don't want this bag looking droopy. You want it to look nice and fluffy. And I had purchased greenery from Walmart. And the Walmart greenery was a large garland, and I cut it apart and separated it to have this beautiful greenery. And so I gathered a certain lot of pieces and filled the tops of my bag. Now, I'm piss pressing that down in there. I'm pushing my greenery down inside and kind of getting it fixed the way that I like because I do want it to sit in the middle. You don't want it further in the back and further in the front. You want it in the middle. And once I got it placed, I then put more polyfill in there so that it held its position exactly where I desired. And these will last for many years. This is a very vintage looking and very modern uh, high-end decor. And they just look good sitting around in bowls by the fireplace, the wood pile, and just decorating your home. They had this beautiful red and white checkered ribbon at Dollar Tree. I couldn't believe my luck. And I thought, oh, that is so perfect for these. 
and it complements all the vintage colors. And so I took a bell and I tied one on each end of G-twine and wrapped that G-twine underneath the red and white checkered ribbon, tied it into place so that they would hang down and I wanted them to kind of be offset. I didn't want them to be exactly side by side. And once I got everything fixed, I then placed some glue on the ribbon to make sure it stayed exactly where I wanted. And then I also put glue inside so that my trees would stay asphyxiated in the center. Rouged up the edges of my ribbon to make them tattered and give them that, I don't know, rigid effect, more vintage, but primitive. So this could fit in your vintage or your primitive decor. And voila, these are spectacularly beautiful and enjoy the free printable. You'll find the link below. Here's you a clever paper hack. These are handmade gift tags. And if you pay attention, you're gonna see something appear here that you didn't know. Oh, look at that. Does that not look like a true tag and take the cardboard from these hanger packages that we get from Dollar Tree and everywhere else and select you some beautiful paper stock, some Christmas or vintage, any of your beautiful scrapbook and paper. And you can find that about anywhere. This particular package came from Hobby Lobby and I glued it onto it with a glue stick from Dollar Tree and just trimmed it off. And what's really unique about these is these tags can fit on any kind of package and really spruce it up. Use your crocodile clips and you can get those from Hobby Lobby. I will also put an affiliate link for those down below. You can actually get them at a very good price on Amazon and you won't have to worry about whether they're on sale or not at the box store. And this paper just trim off. I cut this one in half and on these beautiful tags now, you can also add stamps. So consider ink stamps and you can just put an angle on each side, punch it with your crocodile punch that goes through cardboard, metal, um, almost anything, very thick layers. And these stamps I bought in a package a long time ago. You can still get this package. It's called the Holiday Stamper. And you can find those at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any of your crafting stores. And it has all kinds of different things. On it. We'll be using this stamp more than once. But the idea here is to give you some ideas of how you can make some beautiful gift tags. And you already have paid for them. The scrolled music sheet ornament is retro as well as vintage. This one's more up to date and I'll provide this free printable as well. It has a lot of color on the music sheet along with a bird. And you're going to print this off into maybe a five by seven or three and a half by five is better. And take that one piece and cut it into threes. You can get four per eight by 10 sheet. Use your glue stick and you'll want to also have a pencil. This makes it handy and speedy. The smaller you print this out, the less waste you'll have and you'll be able to use the entire length of it because it's pretty long and you're going to stack these scrolls just like logs. And as you can see here, this is the trick. If you just put your glue stick onto your sheet on one half of it and then begin rolling it onto the pencil, you can have this rolled up in a jiffy. This is a very stress-free traditional ornament making craft that you can do so this can be your christmas craft project to make traditional christmas ornaments now you need three so that is why the single sheet will print you off one sheet and you can get three out of it if you do four on a page like i do then you can make four different scroll music vintage ornament now you'll glue all three of those together like a stack of logs and you don't want them too long. You do want them about three and a half by five, even smaller. And that way you don't have any waste and you can use the length of them. Now, when you wrap your jute twine around these, you're going to be creating a hanger. So I'm going to show you here how you can catch these in the middle 
and wrap it around there a couple of times before you tie it. And get some of the berry garland from Dollar Tree and some of the greenery, just a smidge, and you'll want a little bit of ribbon too. Now when you tie it, you'll put a knot and then leave a big loop area and tie a knot up top and clip it. That will become your hanger. So you just created a hanger. That way it'll hang balanced when you put all the other parts on it and it won't be topsy-turvy. Now, once you have that together and glue, you know, pick out your greenery, take the garland and create you a little bundle of berries. And these have a wire in them, so you can kind of turn them and twist them and wrap them around each other. If you need to, you can snip them and get them the length you want, and then that way you can stagger them and create your little bundle. Don't worry about any sharp pieces. Once you glue this into place, you'll be placing ribbon around it, and that will camouflage and cover the wires of the little berry garland, which aren't sharp. They're wrapped with paper, but I glued them into place, and then I chose this particular ribbon. It has a shine to it. This come from Dollar Tree and wrapped it all the way around because this is a little small ornament and you know you can see it's just the length of the palm of your hand and i uh, had it up so there <laughs> but i caught it <laughs> good retreat good retrieval excuse me and just glued it around it then i created me a little bow and glued it in the center as well and that just will top it off make it look gorgeous you can also use the tinsel uh, stems for this now the fabric that we created with the tarot magic the cut off fabric i used my ink stamps now you can use about any ink stamps these holiday ink stamps are still available you can still find them at hobby lobby in different places it's a whole set of them it's like eight different stamps and your crocodile punch and they'll create you a hole in your fabric if you have an aisle all excuse me all you can punch through that with the dollar tree all and i ran my g twine through it and i tied it loosely because i want this to dangle on the ornament so with the scroll music sheet ornament i'm tying it on to the existing hanger and then that way it'll dangle down and you can see the merry christmas very vibrantly on the tree and voila, here we are. Let me know how you like this one. How much did it snow? The primitive measure how much it snowed stick. And this snowman snow measuring stick you're going to love. I used the five gallon painter's stir and stick and using my 15 inch regular ruler, make a mark for every single mark that whole length. You are dropping down an inch and a half from the handle of your five gallon paint stick. Now, if you have scrap wood and you just have a straight stick, then know that the stick needs to be about, I don't know, 16 to 18 inches long to make this turn out really good because the length of it being 15 inches and anything above that. So I guess that would be an 18 inch long for the five gallon paint stir. As you see, I'm making the mark with a pencil all the way down. Now, I've already pre-painted the upper part I left unpainted, but I've painted mine white so it shows up like a snowman, and the upper part we're going to turn into the snowman's hat. So once you make all of your marks down your ruler, per se, of your snowman, primitive snowman, how much did it snow measuring stick, paint the top of it black. Now, using your black paint marker, go over all of your lines for your ruler and do it just like a ruler. Now, I know you're going to want to save this to your playlist to make you one because this is not only just a great gift, it has a lot of humor and you're going to love some of the comments that are put on here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do join Danny Soap DIY team and a thumbs up for this video. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. It's another way of saving as well as sharing my video. And I appreciate the shares. Thank you so much for all of your help and support through the years. 
Now, as you can see, I'm making little comments up here at the 15 inch mark. You'll make another comment at the 10 inch mark and you'll make a comment at the five inch mark and one, another comment at the one inch mark. And your comments will change. And I will give you a close up so that you can see what I put, but there are many suggestions. And they're funny and humorous. And as you can see, I'm actually writing the numbers of the measurements and only in the whole form. The halves and the quarters don't put anything. Just make sure it's a quarter inch line for quarter inch marks, half inch line for half inch mark, and a one inch line for the one inch mark. And therefore, it'll look just like a ruler. And you can use a ruler to mimic. And as you get up to the top, you can start putting details on your snowman. Add the eyes, use your orange Sharpie or paint marker for the nose, and then of course, you can use your marker to make his mouth. Now to create his brim of his hat, truly make this look like a snowman, just take you a cardboard to make you a template, as I'm doing here, and it's kind of a rigidy, uh, hillbilly, <laughs> primitive hat brim and you can make yours straight if you want to there is no requirement i just thought you guys would get a big kick out of this um it is a primitive how much did it snow uh snowman measuring stick and these are just great humor especially here in north carolina in the south where <laughs> we keep wishing for it to snow and if they give even a little hint it's gonna snow everyone runs to the grocery store empties it out so it's just very funny so the comments you're going to put on this measuring stick you can see some of them here like oh my at the very top and you know uh bring it on and then i think down at the bottom it was dustin and uh the other one was hit the snooze i believe so you can put different comments at those measurements the one inch the five inch 10 inch and the 15 inch at the top and do it based on your state or how you guys handle uh, whenever they're calling for snow or when you get for snow. Like, oh my goodness, that's what I call snow. Or, you know, get out the bulldozer or time to go buy gas for the generator. Did we get gas for the generator? There's so many different comments you can put on there. Make it really, really humorous. I created a total of three of these. All three of them have different uh, remarks and comments. And this was a Pinterest-inspired project. So I think you'll really enjoy it, especially you have uh, big humor in my family. And if you have those with big humor, they're going to love this. So I took one of the jumbo sticks and created the hat. So after I cut my felt template, I glued it on to one of the ice cream sticks or tongue depressor sticks and then used wood glue to glue it on to the paint stir so this five gallon paint stir you can pick these up for free at your local lowe's or home depot and you may just have one in your stash that you can craft and this makes a great humorous christmas gift now i added a sprig of greenery and a berry to his hat i did that because to me that looks more like a snowman and I knew you guys would enjoy it. So if you really enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're liking these projects, be sure to save it to your playlist and subscribe. And I do put Mod Podge on this to seal it. If you're going to be using this for sure, definitely put at least two coats of Mod Podge. So as you can see here, dusting, um, <laughs> keep it going, call in, and oh my. So here is my snowman how much did it snow primitive measuring stick the vintage ski ornament and this one has a bonus with it as well so select two of the jumbo tongue depressors and some skews along with some buttons and my heavy duty snips this way i can cut them without any brittleness like scissors would do if you don't own one of these sets of snips you should get you a pair and i got these at lowe's um, so as you can see here, I'm measuring my skews to see how long I need them to be. And you want it kind of balanced when you're making a set of these skis. So these snow skis, they'll look really long and nice on the tree. 
and pick two of your really small buttons because these are going to be for your ski picks and this way they look more natural it looks suitable and i went through the dollar tree buttons cup and just picked me out too if you cannot find any that are small that are black you could pick another color and use your paint markers or something to color them up and there's different things you could use the metal snaps those work really well as the picks at the bottom of your skis now i took some jute twine and if you watch real carefully here if you put just a little bit of glue and get your jute twine attached you can cut it to for the handles and then on the opposite side you'll put the glue and that little piece of jute twine will actually stay on there without a problem now i did this prior to painting them and so you will see later on in this video where I go back and correct that and rectify <laughs> what I did. Because sometimes as DIYers, we get in a hurry and we forget, oh, I might want to paint that first. <laughs> so this was one of those situations. It still worked out. Now I grabbed my elephant and I went ahead and painted my skis. Once I got that done, I had also done the little handles over there, and I grabbed the wax from the Waverly, and I put the wax on them. For one, they'll give them that vintage look, and it tones down the gray. The gray is fine. It looked great, but I almost started to leave them like this, and I got creative. I'm like, hmm, let me rub off this wax, because this makes it slick, and they won't be all dry, powdery, mute looking. They'll be more matte. Found my snowflake ribbon i love and it has a little red trim to it but i end up cutting that in half because it's a two and a half inch piece and then i just cut them down to fit and this looked even better i'm a, i'm not kidding these things turned out so gorgeous and i'm just tickled how cute these skis look and they look so real and it just gives them that vintage appeal so as you glue your ribbon on there, that's another way that you can paint up the skis. You can use stamps, and you could use just your free hand and paint them if you like. You can put all kinds of different stripes on them and just really, truly make them look like skis. I personally have never gone skiing, but I admire anyone who can mountain ski. I think that is just fantastic. I haven't ever had the opportunity um, so I haven't ever learned how to ski. I haven't ever been to a resort, but I love the nostalgic of it. Put your glue insurance on the back to hold these tongue depressors together and give it a firm surface because they will be holding a little bit of weight by the time you add your ski handles and also your greenery. Now, as you can see here, I crisscrossed the skis and glued them, put the glue insurance. Now you want to do one of your picks at a time and so with your rods there you'll crisscross them and put a little glue in the center to secure it now i chose the greenery and the berries that's kind of been always my theme at christmas especially with any of my vintage ornaments and it just looks so nice wrap a little bit of jute twine around it several times and make sure you go the opposite direction with the other tail and tie it real good. It just gives it that true vintage feel. And it looks so nice. A little bow, and it just tops it off perfectly. Now, I do put what I call glue insurance on my G twine. That just ensures that the bow doesn't come untied if it gets pulled or shuffled around in the storage box. These tags I got from Michaels, and I painted it white, but I also give it a little distressed look and once again with the stamps these are my go-to this year and i put this snowman on this wooden tag it gave it such a vintage feel and i was so pleased with it and just really loved it that i really truly added one of these wooden tags to just about every ornament i've made this year for the booth as well as for my family 
and I have a to and from stamp that I did red on the back. Take your ink stamp and just rub it around the edges and that will give it a little bit of ink distress and make sure you coat it with the wax or varnish and to ensure that your stamp stays there. And make sure that ink is dry because I'm telling you, that ink will come off if you're using the varnish. If you're using the Mod Podge and it's dry, and it'll stay in place. And now I basically am showing you how I did the hanger for this one. I created it, the hanger with G-Twine. I went ahead and made it as though it were a price tag hanger. And I actually slide it down behind the previous G-Twine that was wrapped around it. Once I do that, I can pull it through and it will forever stay there. It's not going to slide off because the G-Twine is kind of roughed and therefore I can attach my tag to a different string so it dangles below this set of skis. And at first I was really struggling with it. I was like, oh, how am I going to get that on there? I want that to dangle down and show off, but I don't want it to mask the skis. And this was how I fixed that. So once I put the tag hanger on the back and attached this wooden tag, it turned out perfect. So I created two more um, using the jumbo sticks and I used the crimson and the fern of the Waverly chalk paints. Use you a pencil trimmer to sharpen your skews so they have a point on them or any of your wooden dowels that you have, maybe from some of the picks we've used from Dollar Tree. And those are the ink stamps that come from Dollar Tree. And they have all kinds of different sayings and shapes on them. They had deer, they had snowflake, and these are in the kids' ink stamps. They're already the uh, pre-stampers. And I glued G-Twine onto these to trim them out. And then this way, these have a point at the top of the ski versus being rounded like the previous set. And once I did this, I really did this and left this in so that you could see how you can truly use different colored buttons and they do not have to match in color. And you can attach those to the skews. I did paint the skews on these prior to putting the G-Twine, by the way. <laughs> and then the little mini buttons in the Dollar Tree button jar, you got tons of choices. So these were just perfect. The little light green ones went perfect with the vintage green ski ornament. And then the orange went really good with the vintage crimson red skis ornament. And then those stamps, like I said, they're already pre-inked. You just press them down, it makes the little stamp. And they were still wet, even though I was working with these skis. Once again, glue them where the G-Twine is so that they'll attach to each other since it's risen up. And this one just takes a moment because they are crisscrossing and it is a round stick, it's not flat. So you just have to be strategic on where you place your glue. This would be a great relaxing ornament to make for your traditional Christmas ornament making this year. And you can customize these. I left this in to give you some more ideas that you can make these very vintage. You can personalize them. You could put someone's name on there. You could put the year on there as well. Or maybe a past memory of a great ski trip that you and your family took. And you can memorabilia these by putting the date and information on the back of them and personalize them with their name with the wooden tag. And give you some ideas on how many different ways you can use your ink stamps for more than one project and really, really make them look high end. Now I made these for the booth and these will sell as Christmas ornaments at the booth. And they were just additional ideas that I thought I would share with you and that you would enjoy too. Now as I've created these and wrapped these with G-Twine in the center, give them two or three winds when you do these and tie them together. And this is a great item to sell for Christmas presents or to stuff stockings or add to Christmas gifts. It is just the right size. It's not too heavy. And it is high-end ornament. If you purchase these in the marketplace, 
they can be rather expensive because they do make them very fancy just like this. But I wanted to show you that you can do this too. And if you have a booth like me or you sell at a festival or bazaar or craft fair during Christmas time, this is one of the high sold ornaments that is purchased because it does have that vintage nostalgic feel to it. And once again, just wrapping the twine around all the greenery and tying it on. This was one of those, remember, I put the G-twine on there and then I went, uh-oh, I forgot to add the greenery. So I went back and took the G-twine off, added the greenery, and then wound the G-twine around it to hold it in place. And it looked so much better. And I did also create the hanger for these the same way. If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. Let's me and YouTube know you enjoyed it. And consider subscribing to the channel. I would love to have you on the Dandy Soap DIY team. And join me, share your postings on Facebook or Instagram with me as well. And I enjoy seeing what you're working on. Any ideas? I love your comments. Let me know which one of these ornaments was your favorite. This Dollar Tree DIY is a Dollar General DIY, and I purchased these trees for a dollar, and I'm gonna use the Waverly Antique in wax, and we're gonna really spruce up these dimensional trees. They slide together and make it very compact to pack them up every year, and they have this split in them, just like you made maybe in school, and you have a cut at the top and a cut at the bottom. If you have scrap wood, you could actually make a set of these, and they are gorgeous. I was inspired by a video I saw that was displayed on Pinterest, and I thought, hmm, we could do this. And it just so happens that at Dollar General this year, they have them cut out, so you don't find them plain like they are in this particular video, but you might have some. And if you find the others, you could still do this trick to them. So now that I've got the antique wax on them and they have that beautiful brown, let's take a white paint marker and we are accentuating the leaves that are on these trees. And you'll put a little dot. Now you could do scrolls, you could do little curly cues, you could do dashes and ripples, whatever your heart desires or what you think you would like. And they have this true, I call it candy tree effect. Like the trees that you buy that are candy, they have this same little look to them. And when you buy the candy to eat, it looks identical. And voila, here they are. They are absolutely stunningly beautiful. Make your stunning Christmas decor, gifts, and ornaments this year. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth. I'll be crafting y'all. Select another video. I have one right here.